Segmentation is a procedure to dissociate various different tissue types within the brain and output them into different masks. So for example, we might want to tease apart the gray matter from the white matter in an anatomical image so that we can use those later to quantify them and then possibly compare the amount of volume in those different tissue classes across subjects or across groups. Now, one use of segmentation, at least in a program such as SPM, is to use it for normalization. So for example, you might warp your gray matter mask to a gray matter mask that is in a standardized space such as MNI. Now, with FSL, to my knowledge, there is no option for using masks to warp to a standardized space for a particular tissue type. But you can still use those masks and quantify the volume for that mask. So first of all, let's open up an FSL GUI. Go ahead and click on Fast Segmentation. And in this directory, all I have is one image, and it's an anatomical image that has been skull stripped. It, it, it has had BET applied to it. So you can see here, it's an anatomical image, and it has the brain suffix appended to it. That means that it has been stripped of all non-brain material. So go ahead, double-click that. Image type, usually you'll be doing segmentation on a T1 weighted or anatomical image. Now, if you have a very high resolution T2 weighted image, you can also potentially do segmentation on that image as well. But for most purposes, you'll be using a T1 weighted image. Now, an output image's base name will automatically pr be provided for you. And this is just what I input up here and it will output several different images with different suffixes indicating which tissue type that output file represents. So for example, you might see something like S007 dot 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 brain underscore PVE1, which might correspond to the gray matter mask that's been output. The number of classes is usually fine as a default of three. This will attempt to segment your anatomical image into three distinct classes. Gray matter, white matter, and cerebrospinal fluid. Now that's usually enough for most people. If you have, say, a patient with lesions, you might want to have four classes so that one of the classes will soak up any variance attributed to the lesion. Conversely, if you have very poor discrimination or signal-to-noise ratio between your gray and white matter, then you might want to only use two classes. Now FAST uses a k-means clustering algorithm in order to dissociate these different tissue types. Now what that means is it will try to estimate which intensity corresponds to either say white matter or gray matter. It's not surprising that in a T1 weighted image white matter is brighter than gray matter, which in turn is brighter than cerebrospinal fluid. And that is the algorithm that FAST will use to tease apart these different tissue types. The rest of these options are fine as defaults. If you want to output an estimated bias field, you can also do so here. Now this isn't recommended for if you want to use that bias field in order to do unwarping. If you want to do that, it's recommended that you acquire a separate field map scan which acquires both magnitude and phase field maps. However, this can be useful if you want to estimate bias fields for several different subjects in your studies and see if there's any systematic difference in the bias field across those subjects. So again, bias field refers to any inhomogeneities in your magnetic field that you may want to be aware of. And lastly, this box, this box checked partial volume maps will output different volume maps for your different tissue types. We're not going to go over the advanced options. Suffice it to say, they're usually fine as defaults, but if you want more information, you can go on the FSL wiki to read more about those. So after you've input your skull stripped anatomical image and selected the number of classes you want, go ahead and click Go. On my machine, this takes about 10 minutes. For some, it can take up to half an hour or more.
after you finish running fast, go ahead and look in your directory where you've output all of your images. The ones that you want to focus on primarily are these three right here. There's PVE underscore zero, PVE underscore one, and PVE underscore two. So there are three tissue classes that have been output here. And they correspond to first, zero is cerebrospinal fluid, one is gray matter, and two is white matter. So if we go ahead and open up FSL view, first of all, I'm going to open up PVE zero. Now notice it's brightest in, say, the ventricles and in the meninges and the sinuses of the brain. Not surprisingly, this is where the most fluid and cerebral spinal fluid will accumulate. So that's why it is brightest. Also notice down here, as this intensity changes as I move around the map here. This intensity corresponds to how much of that voxel actually incorporates a given tissue type. So for example, the voxel that I'm located on right now is 42% cerebrospinal fluid. This makes sense because each voxel has the potential to overlap different tissue classes. You might be on the border between gray matter and white matter, and so you'll have a combination of both gray matter and white matter within a given voxel. Moving on, we can open up our second tissue type. This is PVE underscore one, and this is the gray matter mask. You can see it's done a relatively good job of tracing out all the gray matter and cortex around the entire brain. Now, it's worth mentioning that FAST is done primarily to segregate and segment cortical areas. For subcortical areas, you may want to look into the program first. So as you, you have gotten done looking at the different maps output by FAST, go ahead and close that. And now we can estimate the volume in each of those tissue types using the command FSL stats. So let's say I want to estimate the amount of gray matter in voxels for my gray matter type. So PVE underscore one. Okay, now we're gonna feed in the flags to FSL stats M, which is the mean, and V, which is the volume. Mean refers to summing over all of those intensities or fractions within certain voxels for a given tissue type. Okay, and then we can pipe this into awk. And since there are actually two columns output by V, I believe, we are going to take the second column, which is volume in voxels. Okay, and the result is about 784,000 voxels. This is a very high resolution T1 scan, and it was less than one millimeter isotropic voxels that were acquired, which is why this value is so high. So that's how you can calculate a simple amount of volume within a gray matter mask or any other mask output by, by FAST. Now, if you want to use segmentation for much finer grained cortical and subcortical areas, I recommend you use FreeSurfer. Now, FreeSurfer takes a long time it can take up to a day on most machines, but you will get output tables that categorize the amount of voxels for each separate cortical and subcortical parcellation. So for example, you may want to know how much volume is there in millimeters cubed or voxels in, say, a region like the left amygdala, and FreeSurfer will output that into a table you can then use as either covariates or statistics if you want to compare different groups against each other. We'll cover that in a later tutorial, but this is a very quick introduction to FAST, and as you can see, it's a very straightforward and easy tool to use. You can look for more examples of how to calculate these volume maps on the blog.